Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'll be sharing with you the basics on motion tracking, and let me lay down some groundwork here. Um, <laughs> fairly recently, I discovered some things about motion tracking that I kind of knew about but didn't really dig into very much, and while I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that I didn't know about these, I think it'd be a good idea to turn around and show you about these things so that you're not as ignorant as I was. First of all, first day is just some basics. I did know these basics, but I'm just gonna lay down some groundwork for the next few videos. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, basics. Very, very basics. Putting down a tracker, you just hold down control and click the left mouse button, and if we want to track that forwards, we can hit E, and immediately, by default, this just tracks through our footage really nice and easy. And this is a really easy marker to track, so it makes sense that by default it just got that right off the bat. So if we go over to the panel on this side, which you can enable by hitting N, and then go down into the Track tab, you can see we've got this nice little picture here of our marker that we're tracking. And on this side, you can see all the settings for this particular track. Now you can see here there's some settings that are similar to the settings over on this panel, and the difference is these are specific to this track, and with these, these are just like the default settings. When you add in a new track, these are the settings that these tracks are going to have. Another quick tip, if you hit L, you can lock your view to the tracking marker and see if it's messing up at all. It's looking pretty good right now, so we don't really need to do that, but I think it's a pretty nice view to be able to see what's going on. And so with the very basics out of the way, I wanted to talk about patterns real quick here. So up here in the corner, you can see this nice little image of our track. This up here is the pattern, and if we scale the marker up, you can see that gets to be a bit tinier. And the pattern is basically the image that Blender is looking for to track. So by hitting S and scaling up our tracking marker, we make the pattern bigger, and we can scale down, all that good stuff. We can also rotate it, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Something that you can't see as well is the search area. And if you hit Alt-S with a tracker selected, then it shows this search box here, and we can hit this little corner to scale it up or down. And the idea here is if our tracking marker moves extremely rapidly from one frame to the next, say it appeared over here all of a sudden, then that would be outside of this search box and the tracker would lose it. But if we turned up the search size and it moved to over here, it would still be in the search, so it would probably pick it up. Now the caveat here is with a larger search size, it takes longer to track. So you could get faster tracks if we had a smaller search size, but it'd be more likely that the marker would move out of the search area and the tracker would lose it. Okay, so that is some basics, talking about pattern size and search size. In the next video, I'll get into more settings like the motion model and normalize, and we're also going to talk about weight and correlation, all that good stuff. I kind of want to keep these short and sweet, so I think we can pick up again in the next video. Now, if you found this video useful and you'd like to learn more about visual effects in Blender, I've created a completely free video for you that goes over five different tips for integrating your CG creations into real life footage. So if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description. Give that a click. But hey, we're about wrapped up here, so I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.